welcome to St. Patrick's. Our first hymn this morning is hymn 193. standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David said concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently that our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would, be, he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, 
for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. In this morning's Gospel, we hear the story of Thomas, one of the disciples. Thomas was not with the disciples on Easter night when Jesus first appeared to the disciples. Jesus entered through a locked door and said to his disciples, peace be with you. And they were, they were reassured at that moment that in fact their leader, their spiritual guide had been resurrected from the dead. When they went and told Thomas what they had seen, Thomas said, I will not believe that he is resurrected until I can touch and feel the wounds in his hands and his side. And so a week later, which is actually this very day, a week after the resurrection, Thomas was with the disciples when again they were behind locked doors and Jesus appeared to them and Thomas had the opportunity to feel and touch Jesus and he responded in faith, my Lord and my God. His faith was restored and renewed through the presence of Jesus Christ. Because Thomas had this experience and, and it is relayed to us in John's Gospel, we refer to him as Doubting Thomas. And this again is one of those phrases which has carried on through the ages. And when we encounter someone who is skeptical or doubtful, we often refer to them as a Doubting Thomas. I prefer to call Thomas Reasonable Thomas. He was unwilling to believe until he could use his God-given power of reason to actually know for sure to his way of thinking that Jesus was resurrected. He used his God-given gift of reason to renew his faith. Reason has been an important faculty of ours throughout the ages. The more I read the Bible, like Shakespeare, I find the, there is more and more revealed truth about the nature of life, more and more information that can help guide me through the good times and the bad times in this world. The Bible contains many insights. It's interesting that Thomas needed to have visible and physical proof, reasonable proof, that Jesus was resurrected. And even though this particular truth, or the value of this truth, the use of reason, was presented in the Bible over 2,000 years ago, it wasn't until around 1,600 years later that human beings rediscovered the value of reason as a faculty which could be used to understand our world. We refer to this rediscovery of the value of reason as the Enlightenment. It was a time of awakening. 
when people used the power of reason to unleash many important moments in our history as human beings. Our own revolution was a product of the Enlightenment. Scientific discoveries were a product of the Enlightenment. And the value of education came out of the movement called the Enlightenment. All of these wonderful gifts that we have obtained through the ages from use, by using our reason were born at that time. And yet, the power of reason was first revealed to us in the Bible long before. There are three things that we should take from this gospel lesson. First of all, there's nothing wrong with doubting that God exists. There's nothing wrong with challenging those who claim to know God to listening to their story with skepticism or doubt. There's nothing wrong with finding out for yourself whether or not God really exists. God does not punish us because our faith is not mature or is not yet developed. Even for those of us who have faith, we may have moments of doubt, but God does not condemn us because of our fears. Secondly, we should remember from hearing this lesson that each of us has to come to know God on our own. Each of us has to find our own path to faith. Faith is not something which is handed to us or read in a book or a pill that can be taken. Faith is a journey, a discovery, a pursuit, something which we must find for ourselves, something which we must build within ourselves. Thirdly, we should remember that God waited, waited until Thomas was with the Twelve to allow him to refresh his faith. Jesus appeared to the disciples without Thomas first and came back a week later when Thomas was there. The message here is that God never abandons us. For those of us who have faith, God is always there for us. There will be times when we may do what is not expected by God, but He is always there to welcome us home, to forgive us. He wants us to be His disciples, to be His children. He wants to love us and for us to love Him. He will never abandon us. It's interesting to note in this difficult time when we are all restricted to our homes that we are like the disciples behind locked doors, wondering where do we go from here? What does the future hold? What will life be like after this terrible situation that we find ourselves in? How will we respond to what we have been through? There appears to be some good news. It appears that maybe we have seen the worst and we are headed for better days. Whether or not this is definitely true is not clear. At least not yet. One of the problems with having a church in the sanctuary is that if there's a baby present, you're liable to have a moment of crying and wailing. But when you're outside, heaven knows what's going to happen but the truth is where do we go the disciples left that locked room renewed in their faith and went out into the world to found a great world religion they had their doubts many of them were put to death in cruel ways Thomas himself went to India all the way to India from Palestine and founded the Christian Church in India the question for us this morning and in the days ahead is what will we make of this tragedy? Will we love our neighbors? Will we grow closer together? Will we recognize that 
no, no matter what boundaries geographically or politically may separate us in the world, we are still one people, the children of God. Will we come out of this renewed in our faith and ready to build a better world? Will we, like the disciples, go forth in faith and make the world a place where God can exist and be known by all who have doubts and fears? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us in this difficult and lonely time. Help us to see that you are with us always and that you will never abandon us. Help us to see that you are calling us to build a better world, a world where all may be loved and cherished and cared for. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all our creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift to those who believe. To complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all, when the hour had come for him to be glorified, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper he took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve its peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 